Good morning. Uh, well, I wasn't going to do a live this morning for breakfast, and then I've had a couple of people message me this morning, uh, and the last one was the lovely Rachel Carter, uh, who said, what are you cooking for breakfast, Phil? Get on the live and let us see what we can have for breakfast. Uh, and I'm really, I'm really grateful, actually, that uh, you're all taking the time and effort to message me and saying you're appreciating the um, food cooking that I'm doing at home. You know, maybe not the greatest chef, but I do like to share and interact with you and have a bit of fun whilst doing it. I hadn't even thought about what I'm doing this morning. Oh, morning all, Bill, Gavin, Cash, Stephen, good morning to you. Uh, nice to see you this morning. Uh, on my walk, on my daily exercise yesterday, if you remember, if you saw yesterday's live, I said, morning, Sonia, how are you, beautiful? If you saw yesterday's live, I said um, I wasn't going to go out and look stupid and get burnt like these people that then come back and say, oh God, and post pictures all over the net. I didn't quite burn, but I certainly caught the sun yesterday on my walk. And I'm actually quite pleased because I was starting to feel a bit pasty and pale. So look, I'm looking at my fridge this morning. I, I want to share it with you. Craig Stanley, good morning to you. Patrick Noon, so, so nice to see so many up already on this Easter Saturday. Uh, have you got your Easter eggs in Sainsbury's? Because nobody's buying Easter eggs at the moment because everybody's on lockdown. Are doing a deal. So this one was ten pound, and it's it's a big one, look, and it's now been reduced to seven. And this one's got what's it got in it? Uh, oh, two sharing bars. I don't know what a sharing bar is. It must mean that it's not just for yourself; it's for sharing. But who can you share it with? It means you have to eat it all to yourself if you're in isolation. Uh, so here's my fridge this morning. Um, and I guess I'm just going to have a look to see what we can knock up out the fridge. So I've got some bacon. I've got some... Oh, I've just got some sausage out. So I think the thought of the day. I did say to Steve, what's the inspiration this morning? And he went, sausage. I want sausage. <laughs> No comments. Um, <laughs> so I've got the sausage out and I guess it's just looking what else we're going to use in the fridge. I want to do something quite simple this morning. So um, I think we'll do a bit of chorizo with it as well. Um, I've got some bread and bread doesn't keep it its best for too long, does it? But this Hovis seeded loaf is uh, is lovely to have as breakfast. So I've got some muffins there. No, not muffins. I'm not a big muffin fan. It always makes me think of McDonald's. And McDonald's breakfasts are like, uh, I know some people like them, each to their own. That's what makes us uniquely different. Um, nice to see so many people coming on today, but I have left it a while before I've, I've gone on live this morning with me glowing tan. As somebody commented last night saying, oh, you didn't get burnt, Phil, says, says the man that's glowing bright red as he's cooking or something like, says the Englishman, uh, put your sausage away. <laughs> Dave French, morning to you. Michael Evans, good morning to you. I hear I'm a bit of a secret indulgence. You like to watch my lives, don't you? Uh, can we do a cooking challenge where we choose your ingredients? Oh, no. No, no, because Steve wants sausage. As long as it's got sausage in it. How's that? Yeah, okay. Although that, you might add something really weird in. Like yesterday, I was really pleased because look at these, look. Succulent strawberries. If you can't get outside properly, then bring the outside to you. And strawberries always make you feel like you're outside, don't you? So, don't they? So, um, I've got these lovely strawberries. I also bought, actually, while I was out yesterday, <laughs> Uh, a nice bottle. I was looking for a nice bottle of Sainsbury's House Champagne, but they didn't have any, so I bought this lovely pink carver as well. So that will certainly go nice with those strawberries. Not for breakfast. I'm not having it for breakfast today. Um, absolutely. Oh, bless you. Mackey's Breckage. Yeah, it's like... Um, it's like if it was on a set of a film set or something and they're using rubber products, that's what a McDonald's breakfast reminds me of, like one of those rubber meals. Uh, ha ha. Could be anything then. Yes, it could be anything. Um, so yesterday, I, I went out for my walk yesterday and I went along the canal and things. I should be doing this whilst I'm sort of putting some stuff together, shouldn't I? What have I got? Oh, I'll tell you what I have got. I've got some of these. Uh, Pomodorini... Uh, 
Dorino, sorry, uh, tomatoes. So they're really flavoursome, really intense. Uh, got sweetness, and also because they're fresh, they've got a nice crunchiness to them as well. So I like using tomatoes. I also like using, maybe we'll have a bit of cheese on something. Oh my gosh, can I just tell you, how many people have genuinely put on weight, and I know you keep seeing me cook, uh, morning, noon and night on different occasions, different days. But how many people have genuinely put on weight? Because I lay on the sofa after I ate that huge pulled pork that we'd done last night. And I felt like a great big balloon. And I woke up this morning and I don't feel much different. I still feel like a great big balloon. Where's your cameraman? Still asleep. He's not asleep, but he's in bed. He is in bed. Uh, right, so we're gonna do, what we're gonna do, let's just do something really simple. This is more of a bit of an interaction, actually, because it's not gonna be anything that blows your mind. Well, it might do, if you're hungry. Um, but let me just find a chopping board. Right, okay, well, you, we're just gonna use a little one, because what I want to do is get this, uh, get some tin foil because when you work in hospitality, we all know the little trick of the trade is to line everything with tin foil. In fact, my mum used to do it when I was younger as well. So it could just be a mother's trick of the trade that's got into the hospitality industry over the years. But you line it with tin foil, and then when it comes to cleaning afterwards, there isn't much of the cleaning to do, just to wipe down with a cloth once you've taken the tin foil off, screwed it up, thrown it away, when the fat has dried. Always best to leave it for a bit so the fat dries and then you can just scrunch it all up and throw it away. Shirley Flynn, um, we are under lockdown. Ollie, how have you managed to keep your hair looking so good? Uh, well, <coughs> anybody who knows me knows that I don't like long hair. So this is actually really starting to get long. And I bought some of, I bought some of these off Amazon because I sort of had a panic. So I bought some clippers off Amazon. That wasn't very expensive, I don't know, 25, 29 quid, something like that. Um, just in case I have to do it myself. And I say I have to do it myself because no way will I trust Steve with a set of clippers. Um, you know, I normally have a line put in here and I asked Steve to do it once. And he says, oh, I can't, and he panicked and he panicked. And then I finally got him to do it. And then as soon as he went in, he went upwards and <laughs> say no more um, so I don't know I'm just managing to brush it and shape it in a direction but I feel like I'm starting to look like my dad a little bit for numerous reasons to do with my hair uh, morning Danny how are you my lovely uh, Corey was messaging earlier on uh, actually I'm going to use a red board for this for the meat on this occasion just because I want to get the sausages I want to get my sausages out and uh Give them a cut down the centre. Is it sharp enough? We'll give it a bit of a sharp. Always work with sharp knives. It's safer to work with a sharp knife as long as you're careful, obviously. Keep them away from children. I swear to God, my mum lined the entire oven with foil when I was a kid. Well, there's somebody who definitely didn't want to do the cleaning afterwards. But uh, what a great woman to be able to uh, think that far in advance and think, right, I'm lining everything. <laughs> uh, so I've got these sausages this morning. So these are uh, Co-op Finest Irresistible Bold and Peppery, it says, Cumberland Sausages. So we're just gonna tip those out on there. And what I like to do with sausages if I'm cooking them in the oven. So you can cook them in a frying pan. And Rachel said to me, do something fried. But fried to me is similar. But uh, if I'm frying, I like to cook in an olive oil. Uh, sausages aren't, in, in my eyes, the best thing to cook in olive oil in a pan. And it just makes them a little bit greasier as well. So what I like to do with sausages, so it cooks some of the fat that's in here out, is do them in the oven. And when I do them in the oven, I then always slice them down the centre and just open them up like so. So it goes from being the round sausage to then being open like so. So it's still in two halves, it's still in one whole piece, 
but I like to then put them on there. And what that will do is when they're cooking in the oven, but under the grill, um, so I've got the grill part of the oven turned on, sorry, I should have said that. Uh, it will just cook them quicker and it will also help to cook out some of that fat. And I know the flavor is in a lot of the fat, but also, you know, you do want to protect your heart a little bit. So to help cook out some of the fat, you're still going to have fat in there and all the other peppery spices and the pork meat, etc. Um, and also it will cook it quicker by opening them up. They actually smell gorgeous. Can't beat a sausage. And that's coming from you, Danny Hadley. <laughs> oh. Can't beat a good sausage. Right, they're all going on there. On the last one now. So we're having six sausages all cut in half. And I'm just going to wash this knife because I want to use it again. I'm just going to turn that chopping board over so that I can just get out the already cooked chorizo. Now I like to use some chorizo, which of course is just like a big sausage again. It's a Spanish sausage chorizo. Um, and obviously a lot of people in the UK say chorizo, which is okay to say, but if you're in Espana, they say chorizo. Um, so there we are. And I like to use that because it just gives some extra punch and flavor. And it's always good to cook your chorizo, although it's already cooked and you can eat it raw as such or cold because it is already cooked up. But when you cook it, you just um, soften it up slightly because when you buy, as, you, as you'll know, if you've bought chorizo before, when you buy chorizo, it comes, um, it's, it's, it's a very firm meat. Jesus Christ, you've doubled the size of your sausage. Well, wow, hello. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna put that on there. Now the chorizo does cook up a bit. I'm just gonna try and squash that piece out where it's a little bit thick. And the same with that one, just bash it with a knife. Yes, there we are. And I am gonna drizzle over a little bit of olive oil over those. Um, extra virgin as well. Just so that we get, I've just cut another piece off there. Just so that it keeps in some of the flavour and doesn't dry it out. <laughs> oh, Blaze Reynolds, I love you. Do you know how many people, when my friends come round, I have a habit of leaving the fridge door open because I go backwards and forwards. I know it's not a good thing. I've got some mushrooms out as well. Right, let's get some. So we've got the extra virgin olive oil. I'm just gonna put a bit of that over the top of this chorizo. And of course, the nice thing about that as well is it also gives you that extra um, Mediterranean feeling, doesn't it? Because olive oil is so Mediterranean, the same as olives and those sort of thing. And I love working with those. They're all flavoursome products. So yesterday, <coughs> I w so yesterday I went for a walk, uh, I'm taking me exercise as, as we're told to do. I'm getting fatter, I'm blowing up. I don't want to have a heart attack before the coronavirus is over and the way I'm going, I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up happening. Heaven forbid, no, heaven forbid. But. Um, so I'm trying to exercise. I've just finally ordered the two bicycles online that I wanted. Um, they're not cheap, are they, to order bikes? Gosh, um, a few hundred pound each. So I've just ordered those so Steve and I can start going out cycling and avoid as many people as possible, but get our daily exercise. And also you're on the move. And there's a particular reason why it pushed me to do it a little bit more. So yesterday I went walking along the canal as I normally do and through the city. Um, that you um, may or may not have seen. And then I, I walked uh, and I sat down on a bench just to stop and have a drink. I thought I'd been walking for I don't know, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and I thought, oh, I'll just stop here and have a moment to have a drink. And in no time at all, a girl 
um, who was quite drunk, came and sat down on the bench next to me. And I, I sort of looked, and she must have been about that, about that far, oh, about that far away from me. And I looked at her and I said, um, excuse me, love, I said, I think we're supposed to be social distancing. And she went, ah, I don't give a fuck about that social distancing. I want to sit on this bench. And I was like, oh, right, okay. I said, that's lovely, isn't it? I said, well, I said, I do. I said, so please excuse me if I just move. <laughs> so I did, I got up and moved and then another drink, drunk came and sat down beside her. But some people just, just don't care. Julia Lawrence, how are you? Good morning to you. Uh, so many people on here this morning. Richard Evans, morning to you. I did say I'm just rustling something up only because I've had a few people messaging me saying, what are you cooking this morning? I never realised that so many people were waiting to see what I was cooking each and every day. So thanks for taking the time to do that. I'm just doing something really simple this morning. I'm doing some Cumberland sausages, some chorizo, some mushrooms, some pomodorino, tomatoes, and, and actually we'll add some cheese on it as well, because I do like a naughty bit of cheese. Um, and we'll do that on some Hovis Seeded Sensations bread. That's it. But also we get to have a little bit of a chat and interact with each other. Feel free to say hello to each other, everybody. You know, we're all in this together. So it's great to, to share. I see that the lockdown is gonna continue. I was also reading an article in the Telegraph earlier on that they reckon even if you've already had the virus, uh, this is today's article, that you can still get it again which is not really good news for us because they've been telling us a lot on the TV about once you've got it and those people that get through, but they're saying that you can get it again. So the interesting thing about that is where does that actually put us? Should we be in lockdown or do we just carry on or is part of the lockdown to ensure that we still keep building up um, uh, the facilities in hospitals and things to be able to to look after the sick and the poorly? Either way, it's, it's just frustrating, isn't it? So I hope you all... Um, being sensible really and social distancing and doing your best and look I think the most important thing for all of us you see different people Facebook social media is always one of those places where you suddenly have people wanting to preach and they're like they've never done anything wrong in their life and they're suddenly telling you how to live your life uh, I've had a couple of people message me saying what are you doing going out it's really uh, disgusting and I'm like well actually it's not disgusting because the government has said you should be having exercise and if you need to go out once a day to get exercise then do it what is disgusting is the people that don't follow the guidelines or listen to advice and then end up going out to parks and staying there and meeting with friends or having parties as we've seen in Manchester um, but actually it's all about common sense <coughs> the thing they say about common sense is it's not that common and that's really really true so uh you know if you go and do something use your common sense if you go for a walk and you see a group of people go somewhere else if you go and sit down on a park bench and somebody else is being an idiot get up and move away you know and and that's the best that we can do we've got to use our own common sense because a lot of people haven't got it Sadly, oh shit, I haven't put the sausages in. Oh, I know why, because I'm just gonna add, I am putting another little naughty treat on the top. So this is Nando's chili honey, um, which is made from the Nando's bees on top of their head office in London. This is pot number 25 out of 100 that was made in this batch. And you'll be disappointed to know you cannot buy this honey. I'm sure you'll be disappointed. If you're a Nando's fan, you cannot buy this honey. It's only been given to certain people. But that'd be something to look forward to. Maybe we should all ask them and they should set up more bee, 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 beekeeperies. I always get that one wrong. Beekeeperies. Um, and start... and start producing honey that they could sell at Nando's as well. By the way, did you and Steve eat all of your dinner last night as it was a <laughs> hefty plateful? Rachel, did you not hear me mention it earlier on? That was one of the largest dinners I've had. And actually when we sat down, even Steve looked at me and said, Phil, 
this dinner looks huge. Um, one of the great things about it though, was the fact that, there you are, they're in the oven now, uh, was the fact that uh, half of that plate, or a good third of it, was made of that beautiful red cabbage that we'd boiled with some onion, um, and a little bit of uh, this red wine vinegar in it. So obviously cabbage, they always say fruit and veg, eat as much as you want, um, but it was big. It was a big portion. Uh, it was it was delicious, but it was a big portion and I struggled to eat it, but that's obviously why I've now gone up to, I don't know brow sizes, 30, 36D or something like that. <laughs> uh, no idea how it works. Um, but that's why I need the exercise and, and that's why it's really, really important because I can just see, who was that guy, Michael, somebody who'd done that McDonald's program where he just lived on McDonald's for a month and he put on loads of weight and he had issues with his heart and card cardio and his bloodstream and so on. They said to him, you've got to stop filming this program. He didn't even get to the end, I don't think. They said, you've got to stop finishing this program because if you carry on eating that, you're going to have a heart attack. It's really bad. So, um, yeah, so exercise is really important, people. Make the most of it. Get out there and uh, look after yourself. So what I like to do with mushrooms, I'm just going to show you here, is I've just got a bowl. Here's my mushrooms. Lovely. I'm just going to give a couple of shakes of salt in there and then quite simply I boiled a kettle I'm going to pour that hot water over the mushrooms put the kettle back and then I'm just going to stick those mushrooms in the microwave now obviously if you do cook breakfast you can do them under a grill if you do them under a grill, it tends to dry them out. I do sometimes do them under the grill if I'm only just giving them a quick blast. I'm going to give them two minutes in the microwave. We put the hot water in there already, so we haven't got to get the hot water to heat up. Um, and then what that will do is that it will poach the mushrooms for us. And obviously poached mushrooms are A, better for us, and B, it keeps all that lovely flavor of the mushroom in there. In fact, in my eyes, it makes it really, really tasty. Um, obviously they are wet because <laughs> they've been in water and they're somewhat poached. So it almost feels a little bit, mm, I don't want to, I'll say slimy. It's not quite slimy, but you just get that sort of finish to it. But the taste, oh wow, it absolutely incredible. So I think that's everything we're going to use from the fridge. We're not going to do anything fancy out of there today. I'm just going to get the bread. Now, so I've just sliced up some tomatoes, which when I turn the mushrooms, not the mushrooms, when I turn the um, sausages over to cook on the other side, I'll then put the tomatoes in there to roast those tomatoes. And I was commenting earlier on about my suntan that I got yesterday, which was... Kyle Dixon was going to watch Pornhub, but this is actually pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, well, I, actually, what are you doing whilst you're watching me? There's a question. <laughs> whatever, whatever makes you happy, I'm here to please, literally. Uh, so, hang on, what's this? Craig Stanley makes me so angry. Went for a walk yesterday and there were so many people about just sat around doing shit. Oh, doing shit all. Not even exercising. I went home promptly. I just moved house to just in time. Um, to be fair, it looked devilish. Delish. Oh, it was delish. It was delish. If you follow my recipes, you'll have some of the most amazing dishes. Yes, Craig Stanley, I completely get you. And it's really, really frustrating when you've got people that aren't, you know, following the rules really. And there's, there's you always get in life those that do and those that don't. And often the ones that don't are the ones that ooh, spoil it for the rest of us um, or put the rest of us at risk and at danger. But look, I like to think that everybody on here is, is probably a little bit more sensible 
and um, uses common sense. <laughs> I'm still chuckling at that Pornhub comment. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> Uh, so there we are. So I've got the I've got the seeded batch bread. Batch. That's very Coventry, isn't it? Batch. <laughs> Ken will be getting excited. He'll be like, "Oh, you're mentioning my neck of the woods." Uh, so that's all cooking now. I haven't got to do much now until wait for the sausages. So let's have a look. Oh, it's looking outside today. You probably all looked out your window anyway. Look at my. You can really see my tan now, can't you? From yesterday. Uh, and also, of course, it on my arms a little bit as well. And also, on my legs. Can you see me? Hang on, where's my legs? Is it there? On my legs a little bit as well. Sorry, camera went sidewards. Uh, so this is Birmingham City Centre today. Oh, do you know what? I, when I opened the window earlier on, the smell of fresh air. I mean, the smell of fresh air. When you live in the city... Um, you really recognise, and it's very rare. I haven't smelt fresh air like this in Birmingham City Centre for many, many years, probably since the 90s, when I first moved into Birmingham City Centre back in the 90s. In fact, 1990 it was. And, um, and the air was a lot fresher in the city, particularly on Sundays when uh, shops still <laughs> used to be closed and bars used to close at lunchtime, 2.30-ish. Um, and the air was really, really fresh and it used to be really peaceful. And when I was walking back from the supermarket yesterday, I was walking up, I went to the Sainsbury's by House of Fraser and um, the old Rackhams. And as I was walking back up towards Pigeon Park and then across towards my apartments at Victoria Square, I, um, I had that moment of reflection where I thought, gosh, I remember Sunday afternoons used to be like this in the city when there was hardly anyone around. All the shops used to be closed. Um, and then you never used to get the supermarkets in the city centre either. So it was even quieter. And it gave me that reflection. And I suddenly felt really happy. It gave me a really happy memory um, that I felt inside, which was lovely because how it'd be nice to go back to having Sundays that are just meant for a day of rest. I know it wasn't Sunday, it was Easter Friday yesterday. Um, but to have Sundays, which is what it reminded me of, that are a day of rest, um, where everybody just gets to chill, obviously unless you work in those professions that have to support doctors, nurses, etc., etc. But wouldn't it be nice just to have a Sunday where you haven't got to work and the whole city and everywhere closed down like it used to i just think that i just think it's beautiful but maybe that's just my thought maybe sunday is a really good thing for you but anyway let me show you the city center this morning An incredibly unique opportunity that, to be able to see the city looking so quiet and empty and deserted. For me, it's beautiful. Samantha Longfellow, hello, my lovely. James Dumphy, Angela Gilrain. Uh, good morning to you all. Chris Lancaster, Andrew Morgan, morning to you. Will Connor, John Tight. So many people on here this morning. Grace, to, uh, great to have you. Right, I'm just gonna check on my sausages. Um, just to see how they're cooking. I'm gonna get me a little oven glove out. I might need a new one if anybody wants to buy me an oven glove. They come in pairs, don't they? I only ever had one. This came as a singular. Oh, wow. Oh. Can you hear that? And if you could smell this, if it was smell-o-vision, then you would also be able to smell that beautiful chorizo, but also the spices of these beautiful, beautiful sausages. And I'm just gonna use my tongue, not my tongue, my tongue, <laughs> to turn these over, because 
this is how we want them to cook thoroughly. Chorizo we don't need to turn over because we're just putting heat through that really and softening it up. And now what I'm also going to do is just throw these tomatoes in here. And did you know, so I was showing you that I had caught the sun yesterday. Actually, I like to cut the backs a little bit more than I do the fronts. The fronts I just like to get the heat through, but I do like to cut the skin off. So we'll just turn those over. And I'm just putting them on top of that chorizo because that will just stop the chorizo drying out too much. So the sausages are ready to go back in. I've just got a bit of a greasy finger, so I'm just going to wash that off. I'm just going to get me... <laughs> Does anybody remember Pingu? For some reason, this reminds me of Pingu. Or what was them things you used to have um, when you were younger that made... You turn that, you got them at Christmas as a present and they always used to advertise them. And it was, um, <coughs> was it called Mr. Frosty? And you would put flavours in. It was basically crust, crushed ice and you would turn the handle and you would get an egg cup's worth out. I never had one. I had a friend that had one, um, honest. And uh, I always used to think, gosh, you get all that effort just to get about that much out of it. I am going to cough. <coughs> Sorry. Right, let's get the toast on, cooking. That's now cooking away. Look at me, I really did catch the sun. Did you know that tomatoes, if you eat tomatoes whilst you're away, tomatoes are really good to um, ease um, sunburn. Hmm, yeah. So tomato, if you eat tomatoes, lots of them whilst you're away on holiday, they really help to stop sunburn. My Frosty was like a slushy. I had one. Yeah, Mr. Frosty was like a slushy. That was it, yeah. So you used to put the flavours in. It was All it did, really, it was crushed ice, wasn't it? It made crushed ice and you put a flavour in, in it. Um, that's not like me being trendy, in it. It's like, in it. Uh, so I've got some lovely cheddar cheese slices here. And I always emphasise cheddar cheese slices um, because cheddar cheese slices are uh, like if you had a block of cheese, like so, but put into slices. Whereas cheese slices generally are that plastic stuff. Um, and actually, if you look at the ingredients in cheese slices, you may or may not know this, but those sort of plasticky ones, like what you get at McDonald's as well, are actually made with, I think it's polyurethane. They've got plastic in them. It's a form of plastic crazy um and it's interesting because i've got friends that are vegan one of my clients is vegan but some of the products that they use um for like cream and things are made with polyurethane and something else so everybody says they're being healthier by having this non-dairy cream and protecting the environment but actually what does it take to make plastic and even worse you're putting it into your body and we saw what all the different things since David Attenborough does his thing on the ocean and plastics. How many people have said how bad plastic is for having in your body? So to eat cheese or that substitute cream that's not cream, don't get it really, um, then, you know, you're not doing any better for the planet and you're certainly not doing any better for your body. So, um, so this is what I get. I get proper, I either use cheese blocks, which I grate, or we have proper cheddar cheese slices so i only want to i've just semi toasted my bread i probably cooked it a little bit too much because i'm just making a sandwich no butter on it because we'll have plenty of sauce to be able to get those flavors going Ah, oh, matt Rowe, hello how are you i look do you know what i love looking on here lorraine baker morning to you as well john wilson uh people from my life that i've interacted with uh on many different times over many years. Some that go back to my very early days of coming into the city, some from my school days. Um, it's just like a representation of my life caught here on Facebook. And long before we had Facebook, what did we have? You either 
was in contact with people that you were still in contact with and you'd see them in a local bar or at work or whatever, or if you still lived in your old neighbourhood, or if you'd moved away, you never saw anybody. But now Facebook does literally bring everybody together and hopefully the people are all using it for the right reasons because I have a fair amount of stalkers, people that have been in my past um, that are just nosy and want to see what you're up to. But then I have an array of beautiful, beautiful people, like your good selves, of course, that uh, take time to interact and watch. And like the messages this morning and yesterday, thank you for sending the comments about food. I'm, I'm pleased that it's helping you pass a bit of time. Those sausages aren't cooked yet. So we'll just let them carry on a little bit further. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased that it's helping you pass the time because it also helps give me a little bit of sanity as well. Um, because it's just good to talk, isn't it? And if anybody who knows me knows that I am, <laughs> dare I say, I am a talker. I love people. Um, you will have seen me hosting and being involved in lots of different events, uh, particularly this year. Um, and obviously one of the things I did when I came back from Leeds was put a lot of time and effort into developing my presenting career more, getting on the radio, um, working on some TV projects that were like this close to to going somewhere but you know we'll, we'll pick that back up when we come out the other end hopefully um, and also working on more awards and dinners and presentations and city events and that was all moving really really nice so you know my time is all about spending spending time with people I love people it's it's everything that makes me you know in hospitality born to serve I love looking after people. I love making people feel good about themselves. Uh, so that's exactly the same now of me doing these lives, being able to think, I have, I've changed my mind, I'm gonna put a bit of Lurpat butter on these because I slightly overcooked them. I forgot I was doing a sandwich and not a breakfast. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put a bit of butter on just to soften them off a little bit more, just to make it a bit more of a pleasurable experience. And of course, you can't go wrong with a bit of Lurpat butter. Can you? It's, it's, it's naughty. <laughs> it's naughty. Got a little bit of salt in it. Bags of flavour. It's butter. It's creamy. But yeah, so thank you for taking the time. And I listen, whether you just like to be there and, and watch what I'm doing, or whether you like to interact, I love hearing your comments. I love, you know, whether it's a heart or you, you give me some feedback or you send me private messages. I love each and every one, so thanks. Thanks very much for taking the time. What are you doing with your Saturday? Yeah, it is Saturday, do you, can you believe it? What are you gonna do with your Saturday today? Um, it's difficult, isn't it? You feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again. I started a new book yesterday. Actually, I'll get it. So, this is the new book I started reading yesterday. And it's called Living With Joy. Living With Joy. Uh, Keys to Personal Power and Spiritual Transformation. It's by a lovely lady by the name of Senea Roman, who's done some other stuff as well. But uh, I am a spiritual soul, and I'm always looking for ways to improve my spiritual journey and knowledge as well. Um, and life is all about the journey that we take and how we share it with others. Alicia, you made me hungry. I'm going to go have some food. Have a lovely day. You made me smile today. Oh, bless you. If I can just bring a smile to your face, my job here is done. If I can fill your belly with food at the same time and give you inspiration, even better. All right, okay. That's almost cooked, I think. Let's just have a look inside that sausage. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. I was like a little schoolgirl there. <laughs> Have a look inside your sausage. Right, that is cooked. That is cooked. That is beautiful. So I'm just going to do something else now. Let me just show you these stunning sausages. Lovely Cumberland sausages. Underneath those tomatoes that are now roasted beautifully, uh, we've got that lovely um, chorizo. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to soften up these cheddar cheese slices. So I'm just gonna do this, this, let's push them together, this, and we're just gonna pop them back under the grill.
for a minute or so. That's going to cook up there. Toast is buttered. We're almost there. Almost cooking with gas. It's electric. So let's do that. Got some juice. Steve will hear me getting towards the end of this live, so he'll start getting himself ready now, thinking, yes, it's almost time for me to eat. He comes out, it's like, you know, if you ever go to a dog track and all of a sudden the hair goes past and the thing comes up and they go, Whoa. yeah, as soon as he knows the food is ready, he'll be here in a flash. <laughs> Which is a good thing, because at least I know that uh, it's going to be appreciated. What I'm going to get out to go with this, some good old HP sauce or daddies. Uh, and some good old Heinz tomato ketchup. Remember the advert where it used to be like, and then for a while they'd done the one where you couldn't see the bottle at all. Yeah. So good morning to you all. Whatever you do today, I hope you do it with love in your heart and you really appreciate those special moments. I think with all of this coronavirus taking place, Firstly, for me to be able to spend a bit more time in the kitchen and cook is the most amazing thing. To be able to interact with you is a beautiful thing. To speak with some of the friends that I have been doing, my normal close circle, but also with the friends that I haven't spoke to for a while is a fantastic thing because, you know, life is all about people and sometimes we're so busy and, you know, you say, oh, let's catch up or let's do this or let's do that. Um, and then you don't actually get together and you're so busy. Now we're being forced to take that time to spend it with people that we would normally probably make that false promise to of saying, let's catch up. And because we're so busy and distracted, we don't get to. Now there's no excuse. You can pick up the phone, FaceTime, whatever, communicate with them. Yes, we're done. Oh yeah. We are done. Um, I'm balancing now. I have arranged following... Somebody said somebody needs to get Phil a workstation like Lorraine for serving stuff up. Uh, I have made plans with my lovely friend Sarah Law who's going to get me um, a kitchen island as such just to go over there. So when I do the presentation of food, I'll have more space. Patrick Noon. Hello, my friend. Nice to see you on here. Uh, send my love to Steve. Steve Evans! food there you are this is cute so look now i'm just gonna uh here's the food i'm just gonna get this under here so we can try and get that cheese it has sort of melted through actually i can't do this so i'm just gonna put that there for a moment can't do it without another set of hands sorry not a set of hands another hand <laughs> i've only got one set of hands oh my gosh this looks incredible Wow. This is a big sandwich. There's cheese going everywhere. It's melted. It's cheddar. Can you have too much cheese? I don't know. What's your feedback on that? I'm just going to move that over here. Excuse me one moment. Cheese dripping everywhere. I will show you imminently once I get it all on the, all on the plate. Let's just move this out of the way. Don't you just love it when your cheese almost goes a bit mozzarella so it's sort of stretching and dripping everywhere. So I'm just gonna scoop out some of this chorito and spread it over the sandwich as well. Some tomato there. I will show you, I promise. Same again. Let's just pick this off, on on there, there. There. Ow! 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 It is hot. <laughs> Very. There. Ow! Have you noticed that my mum, and maybe your mum would be the same or somebody in your family, where they have like asbestos fingers and they can just put their hands in boiling water or pick up hot food. Uh, my mum was an expert at it. I remember my mum used to wash up years ago. And she put her hands, if I put my hand in the same hot water, I'd burn my hands. But she would just be like, washing away, happy as Larry. Um, right, okay, I'm just going to get a little bit of this off. 
just so it looks slightly. Tony, never too much cheese in the morning. Yes, you're a man after my own heart. Do you remember those times, Tony, when me, you and Adrian Morrissey used to live together in my apartment just down the road from here? And uh, we used to go out. We used to finish work, didn't we? And then we used to go out on the, on the lash. Get absolutely smashed. This was a standard working night, which probably happens for a lot of people still in hospitality. You go out on the lash after you finish work, and then we would always grab a pizza or a kebab or something on the way home. Get home. You used to put that uh, manga on, and we used to sit watching that whilst putting lashings of... I think we used to get through a bottle of ketchup a night on our kebab, etc. Right. Might try the yell technique myself. <laughs> Right, okay, so here is the finished article. I could have made it a lot quicker, but of course I was talking and interacting with you. We've got the Cumberland sausage. Um, we've got the chilli honey that I've drizzled over the top of that. We've then put some cheddar cheese. We've got the tomato. We've got the chorizo cooked on there. And that's it. And we've put it on the seeded sensations Hobie's bread. And that is now ready to eat. So I'm going to go now because I'm going to indulge in this, um, which should set me up for the day. And then I might go for a run. <laughs> no, I won't be going for a run. Um, but I will try and get some exercise in and have a walk. Um, I love you all dearly. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for the requests and things. And it's great to get your feedback. So always appreciated. Um, I hope you enjoy the afternoon and I'll catch you all a little bit later. All right, thanks. Bye.